For those who would journey across the vast reaches of interplanetary space, the solar system offers many breathtaking sights. But nothing quite compares to this. A giant world made of gas, completely encircled by a perfect gleaming set of rings. Like a cosmic illusion conjured out of the infinite expanse of space, Saturn delights the eye and challenges the imagination. Yet Saturn is no illusion. It is an exotic natural laboratory that can help shed light on how planets form and perhaps on how life evolved. Four, three, engine start. In July 2004, after traveling in space for nearly seven years, NASA's Cassini mission arrived at Saturn, marking the start of a bold new chapter in solar system exploration. Cassini is not the first spacecraft to reach Saturn, but it is the first to remain in orbit around the planet. It is also the most expensive and ambitious planetary probe in history, gathering data and images over a long period that have completely revolutionized our understanding of Saturn and its many unique features. From its swirling dynamic atmosphere, to its dozens of exotic and mysterious moons, the trillions of floating bits of ice and dust that together make up Saturn's intricate system of rings. And with so much to explore, Cassini would need all the time it could get. When Cassini was launched, scientists hoped that their spacecraft would survive for four years. In fact, Cassini has more than doubled that. And after eight years and counting, it's beginning to reveal details that a shorter mission would have missed. Details that will ultimately help scientists solve some of Saturn's most baffling mysteries. It's easy to understand why the extra time has been so important for Cassini. Just consider how profoundly things can change on our own planet, simply by watching the yearly cycle of the seasons. Without taking a single step, the journey from winter to summer is like a trip to a whole new world. Like Earth, Saturn is also a planet of seasons. The difference is that because Saturn is so far from the sun and its orbit so large, a year on Saturn takes nearly 30 years on Earth. When Cassini first arrived at Saturn, the planet's southern hemisphere was in the midst of late summer. The South Pole was tilted toward the sun, giving Cassini's cameras a superb view of the planet and its rings from below. But over the next several years, as Saturn proceeded along its orbital path, southern summer gave way to northern spring. As the seasons changed, so too did the angle of the sun, and Cassini's cameras faithfully recorded a fascinating transformation. Month by month, the North Pole slowly emerged from darkness, while the broad shadows of Saturn's multiple rings gradually narrowed and shifted. By August of 2009, Saturn was at equinox, and for the first time in 15 years, sunlight was shining directly onto the planet's equator. 
At equinox, the sun illuminates the rings from the side so that their shadows on the planet below converge into a single pencil-thin line, dividing Saturn evenly in half. While across the vast ring plane, a host of rare and striking visual effects appear. Here, a narrow opening in the rings seems to be the work of a cosmic scalpel. But appearances are deceiving. What seems to be a cut in the rings is simply the shadow of Saturn's moon, Mimas, stretched out across the ring plane. Such tricks between light and dark, rings and moons, can only be observed near the time of the equinox, and they are fleeting. Here, Cassini tracks the shadow of a different moon, Tethys, sweeping over the rings in a matter of minutes. Looking more closely, the same effect allows Cassini to spot something new a tiny moonlet just 300 meters across embedded within the rings. Such objects are normally invisible, but during Saturn's equinox, their presence is revealed by the shadows they cast. Here, a jagged line of shadows reveals not just a single moon, but what appears to be an entire mountain range towering two and a half kilometers above the ring plane. These peaks may be more like clouds than mountains. Puffs of dust-sized particles deflected upward by larger chunks of icy material orbiting within the thickest and brightest portion of Saturn's rings. Meanwhile, as the sun begins to warm the planet's northern hemisphere, there is more for Cassini to discover. Not just in the rings, but in the hazy depths of Saturn's atmosphere, where a dramatic change in the weather is about to unfold. For the planet Saturn, one and a half billion kilometers from the sun, the concept of summer is a relative term. Here, at the outer reaches of the solar system, the sun is just 1% as bright as we experience it on Earth. That's far too weak a light for solar panels to be of any use. So the Cassini mission to Saturn relies on the decay of nuclear isotopes to power its cameras and electrical systems. Yet as the seasons change on Saturn, there are signs that the sun can still have a profound effect on this majestic planet. By late 2009, Cassini had been in orbit around Saturn for over six years. It had witnessed Saturn's spring equinox and was watching closely as summer approached for the planet's northern hemisphere. The change brought more light and more heat to the northern half of Saturn's hazy, cream-colored atmosphere. Saturn's clouds are over 100 kilometers thick, their tops are made of frozen ammonia ice. But far below, there is a layer of water vapor. And as heat generates turbulence in these clouds, the result is lightning. In November of 2009, Cassini's cameras, for the first time, witnessed an electrical storm rattling the night side of Saturn. And just like on Earth, the bright flashes of electrical energy came with bursts of radio static. Clearly, the changing seasons had awakened something in Saturn's atmosphere. One year later, on December 5, 2010, Cassini snapped this image of Saturn on the same day the spacecraft's radio and plasma experiments detected lightning in the atmosphere. Although no one realized it at the time, this image contains the first hint of a giant storm about to erupt in Saturn's atmosphere. In this first image, the storm appears as a tiny spot relative to the planet, even though it is already 2,000 kilometers across and growing fast. 
Within three weeks, the spot had evolved into a vast and complex storm system with towering clouds of white ammonia crystals. For months, the great storm raged on, becoming one of the largest disturbances ever seen on Saturn. Over the course of 2011, Cassini's electronic eyes revealed the storm's progress in unprecedented detail, using its infrared vision to peer further into the planet's unsettled atmosphere. False color views like these helped reveal the storm's structure. Here, red indicates the deepest levels exposed by the storm's churnings. Eventually, the storm wrapped itself all the way around the planet, forming a continuous band of chaotic turbulence. For an entire year, it had given scientists their best chance ever to witness the complex workings of Saturn's atmosphere in action. Scientists still have a lot to learn about how Saturn changes with the seasons. And those changes don't just apply to Saturn's atmosphere, but to its largest moon, Titan, one of the most intriguing destinations in the solar system. Titan is more than a moon. It is like a planet unto itself, with a dense atmosphere made of nitrogen gas and a thick orange-colored haze layer that acts like a natural smog. Although the smog conceals Titan's surface from view, it only serves to raise scientists' excitement about what kind of world may lie underneath. Even before spacecraft were sent to Saturn, astronomers realized that conditions on Titan's surface were bound to be interesting, because temperatures and pressures there allow methane to exist as a liquid, a solid, and a gas. Could Titan have rivers and lakes of liquid methane? That is the question scientists hope to finally answer with Cassini. In October 2004, three months after arriving at Saturn, Cassini was scheduled to make its first close pass of Titan, and expectations were running high. The results were astonishing. Through its infrared eye, Cassini could see that the surface of Titan was far more interesting than anyone had expected a sharp separation between light and dark regions that strongly resembled coastlines on Earth. Meanwhile, Cassini's radar unveiled a surprisingly diverse surface that suggested a complex geologic history. But where were the lakes and rivers of methane? Cassini couldn't tell. Because there are no shadows under the foggy haze of Titan, there's no way for the infrared camera to reveal whether the light or dark areas were of different elevations. However, in close-ups, all of the areas seem to be windswept, suggesting that both the light and dark areas seen here are just different kinds of dry land. Fortunately, Cassini had one more tool to help make sense of what it was seeing on Titan the Huygens probe, built by the European Space Agency, had come to Saturn attached to Cassini. In January of 2005, Huygens released itself from the main spacecraft and plunged into Titan's enveloping haze. There, its cameras radioed back an important discovery, an aerial view showing some dark branching channels that had clearly once been carved out of Titan's surface by some kind of flowing liquid. Amazingly, Huygens even continued operating after it hit the surface. Its final image was a tantalizing view of an alien terrain, littered with what looked like rocks, rounded by the action of a flowing liquid. Scientists knew the rocks had to be chunks of water ice, which at the extremely cold temperatures on Titan's surface behave like solid rock. 
But where was the liquid that had flowed over them and carved the channels? To understand what they had found, Cassini's scientists would need a change of season. When NASA's Cassini spacecraft journeyed to Saturn, the planet's giant moon, Titan, had the largest unexplored surface in the solar system. And when Cassini's infrared camera finally peered through Titan's impenetrable clouds, scientists found a world strangely divided into territories of light and dark. The light areas were easy to explain. Like Saturn's other moons, Titan's surface is mostly made of ice. But the dark regions that ran along the giant moon's equator were a puzzle. Was this the liquid methane that scientists had expected to find flowing over Titan's frozen surface? The answer proved to be more complicated. Although these dark plains may have been flooded by liquid in the past, what Cassini found looked more like dry land. Using its radar system to bounce signals off of Titan's surface, Cassini revealed row upon row of wind-blown dunes. The dunes reveal that Titan's dark equatorial zone is more of a desert than a sea. So to look for signs of liquid on the moon's icy surface, Cassini turned its attention to Titan's poles. It was here that Cassini saw its first obvious signs of weather on Titan in the form of thick white clouds of methane circling around the South Pole. In time, Cassini would see many more methane clouds on Titan. As the season changed and sunlight shifted northward, they began appearing over Titan's equator and the North Pole. The clouds proved that Titan was a dynamic world with a restless atmosphere. But did Titan's shifting patterns of clouds also mean rain? On Earth, rain is the way that evaporated water returns to the surface, forming rivers and lakes. On Titan, conditions should be just right for methane to behave in the same way. The first clue that this is happening was this large dark spot found near Titan's South Pole. Unlike the dark regions near the equator, this one had no dunes, but sharp boundaries and a shape and size that reminded scientists of one of Earth's great lakes. They called it Ontario Lacus. The more Cassini peered at Ontario Lacus, the more this strange dark feature seemed like a liquid body. By taking advantage of the spacecraft's radar views from different angles, scientists were even able to construct a computer-animated flyover. There are beaches here, formed by the action of moving waves. There are inlets and bays where liquid has flooded in. And there are even river deltas where dark channels appear to flow into the lake. There seems little doubt that Cassini had at last found a body of liquid methane on Titan. Now Cassini turned its attention northward, beyond the dark dune fields near the equator, and up into regions still emerging from Titan's cold, dark northern winter. What Cassini discovered there looked very much like a landscape inundated with lakes. In radar images, they stand out like pools of black ink against a ghostly white ice scape. And then something much larger, hints of a vast and jagged coastline with jutting peninsulas and great islands. It was to be Cassini's first close-up glimpse of Titan's largest liquid feature. This is Mare Kraken, the Kraken Sea, named after a legendary sea monster. As large as the Caspian Sea on Earth, Mare Kraken spreads across so much of Titan's northern landscape that its full extent has yet to be mapped. 
The more data Cassini gathered, the more obvious it became that it's the northern half of Titan where fluid is most concentrated. And in case anyone needed more convincing, on December 17, 2009, Cassini spotted something that scientists had long been hoping to see. It is the glint of sunlight reflecting off the mirror-like surface of the Kraken Sea. This telltale flash is the final piece of evidence that Titan truly is a world of lakes, the only world in our solar system, apart from Earth, where liquids exist naturally on the surface. In one sense, Titan presents us with an utterly alien landscape, where water behaves like solid rock and methane gas behaves like water. But because there's an atmosphere on Titan, with wind and rain, lakes and rivers, something about this alien landscape also reminds us of home. It's not Earth as we know it, but it shows us where our own planet fits into the larger family of possible worlds, all shaped by the same phenomena. Scientists are now considering future missions to Titan that could include dropping a boat onto one of its lakes, or perhaps the Kraken Sea. Such a spacecraft would become the first mariner to sail beyond the seas of our own planet and reveal the unknown wonders that lie await on these distant shores. When that day comes, it will not only teach us more about Titan, but confirm what the Cassini mission has shown us over and over again. That while seasons may change on Saturn, our capacity to be enchanted by this remarkable planet and its moons endures without end.